Hey, what is going on you guys? Welcome back to another brand new video on my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are having a great day as always. And in today's video, we are going to be diving in to Android Q running on my Google Pixel 2 XL. And I'm just going to show you guys all the new stuff that we've never seen before on Android. What I like, what I dislike, what are the bugs right now on the beta version. It's beta 3, it's kind of developed at this point. And I just want to talk to you guys about Android Q overall, show you guys some cool features and stuff like that. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Okay, so here is my setup right now. And first things first, uh, if you guys look closely, you can see how there's like a live image. It is pretty much the circle has a moving horizontal line kind of thing. So that's a live wallpaper. That's nothing to do with Android Q, just throwing that out there. But this setup is running on the built-in Android Q Pixel Launcher. So everything here is pretty much stock for the most part. So I'm gonna show you guys the most anticipated feature of Android Q and that is full gesture navigation bar. So let me show you how it really works in effect. Let me open up an application for example. So we're on YouTube Music. And if I actually want to go home, all I have to do is just wipe up like that. Pretty much a copy of iOS, but I mean, it's more fluent and it works a lot better than the semi gestures that we had in Android P. So that's how you go home. Now, how do you go to the recent apps menu? So to go in there, all you have to do is swipe up and then you have to hold it in the middle. So I'll show you that in an app. So I'll go back to using YouTube Music then push up and then hold. And as you can see, we are now in the recent apps and I can just go into an app like that. Now, the third thing that we do with our navigation bar is going back. So how exactly do you go back now? Because look, if you look closely, you can see that there is no back button. So how in the world do you go back? Well, let's go into an album or whatever. So once we're here to go back, all you have to do is swipe from the left side and then you're back or you could also go from the right side like this and then drag and let go and you are back so it's really fluid if you ask me and it's a great way to use your screen pretty much because all this time we never really use the edges however there is a small disadvantage to using the edges for this because there are some applications that take benefit of swiping from the side as they're like you know settings page or whatever and a great example would be Google Maps so on Google Maps if you guys don't remember if you swipe like this you would be able to get the same menu that you would get by pressing here so you would swipe and get that but now that we have the back button if you try swiping you will not get that menu instead you will go back so that's a little design change that a lot of app developers will have to fix but you know for the most part I'm a fan of the new gestures when it comes to gestures, I think my favorite feature is the ability to swipe through apps and not just your one recent application that you can switch between. So what I mean by this is, let's open up a few applications. So what else can I open? Coinbase. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four, five applications open. So usually what would happen is if you are on Coinbase, and you swipe like this, it would take you to your recent app. And if you swipe like that again, it would take you back to Coinbase. However, in the new gesture system, I can swipe to Twitter, keep swiping to YouTube Music, go into my settings, then I can swipe the other way and I can swipe back all the way back to Coinbase. So it's like an infinite switcher kind of. It's just really cool. I love the new gestures. I think that's like the main attraction of Android Q and i've been really enjoying it oh and just before i forget i just want to let you guys know that let's say you don't like using the new full gestures you can always revert back to their old version so if you go to gestures right here and then choose there you go two button navigation and the three button navigation Another cool thing is lift to check. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this was added on Android Q 
and this is another useful feature however a lot of phones have had this for a while now but it's still pretty dope so let me show you how it exactly works so let's say my phone is you know just on a table something like this and and my active display is going on and all i have to do is just lift it up like this and the screen turns on without me having to press any buttons whatsoever kind of a neat feature however it's not something really new Let's go into settings and speaking of settings, the first thing I, that you saw me do was actually this, swiping from the fingerprint scanner, which is actually an old feature, something new. But the thing that you might have noticed is the shade of blue. So this before was more of a darker blue on the notification panel, but now it is a lighter blue. Nothing major, but just want to throw that out there. However, you can actually change that if you go into developer options. Now, the way you can do that is pretty simple. Just spam on your build number and then you will get developer options. So heading into developer options, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can actually choose the accent color right here. You can actually go to a black version so it looks something like this. You can also choose a green and there's also a purple. So that's another cool thing that we didn't have in Android P before, just wanted to share that with you guys. So you guys have already noticed it, even when I was opening Google Maps, even right now, my phone is running on a system-wide dark theme. We never had a system-wide dark theme before, you know, there were some Google apps that supported it. For example, YouTube had a dark theme, but we never got a system-wide dark theme and for once, Google is now supporting every single application to be dark including their settings including you know google photos if i open up google photos it is also dark like even the google now page is fully dark now and it is just really dope if you ask me i know there are more additions to android q uh including a new privacy tab so i believe it is right here let me open it up okay so this is the privacy tab and you can actually go into things like your permission manager and for example let's open up uh location so these are all the applications that actually have access to your location. And another cool thing is when you open up an application, it asks you, do you want to grant permission, for example, location as a one time thing, or do you want to allow it access all the time? And one neat feature that I want to show you guys before I end the video is if you go ahead and hold the power button, you now get an emergency button as well. And also, if you go into your settings and search for lockdown and turn it on, it's a neat feature where you can do lockdown and it locks your phone, disables notifications, disables fingerprint scanner, and you have to enter your password in order to unlock. So those are the features that have really caught my eye in Android P. I think it's just Google's way of becoming more open to the mainstream market you know getting closer to that ios simplistic design you know getting closer to a more safer and secure android system even though i've always believed in android for all this time they're just trying to make it more mainstream pretty much another cool feature one last one i promise you guys is when you press the volume and go here you now get a whole set of settings of controlling your volumes for different things like media and your call volume and ring volume and all that stuff straight through your volume swiper from the bottom so this is actually really important because before if you wanted to change your call volume you would have to be in a call and things like that and you would have to go to settings to change other things and all that stuff so all in all great android build i really love it it's only build 3 and it's still very stable. I haven't noticed any major bugs except the fact that I can't really play video games. All video games do crash, except a very few. But yeah, overall, great Android build. All right, that is the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. If you guys made it to the end, that means you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to drop a big like on this video right under the video. And also, there is a red subscribe button also right under the video. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button as well. And be sure to turn on post notifications while you're at it. So with that being said, this is Tech Alpha signing out with today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next one. So peace out.